sky shall unfold, preparing his entrance, the star shall applaud him with thunders of praise, the sweet light in fourth chapter if you would this evening Luke chapter 24 have you thought about that moment when you shall behold him <clears throat> if you're saved it's coming we shall behold him well we're in the book of Luke the 24th chapter Sunday morning, I spoke on the story of Jesus, and we went back and saw Jesus. We picked up in the book of Genesis. We came through his life on earth, realizing that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And then we looked at some men who had been saved. We looked at one man who had never been saved. We saw where the saved folks went. We saw where the unsaved folks went. Uh, but we looked at Jesus. And I asked the question then, do you know the Lord? Are you saved? Most people that day said, yes, I ask you tonight, are you saved? Are you saved? 
If some of you are, you're sleeping. Are you saved? Yes. Amen. Okay, if you are saved, then you're the one I'm preaching to tonight. <laughs> okay? And I say that because tonight we want to look at the privileges that we as saved people have. You realize tonight if you're saved, you have privileges that the unsaved people don't? Say less than 10% of the world's population is saved. Now, of course, nobody knows that. I mean, that's just a poll was taken. But say that less than 10% of the world's population know Christ as Savior. If that be true, then that means that those 10% of people have privileges that the other 80% don't have. Well, what, like what? Well... One is, we find those disciples ask Jesus uh, to teach them to pray. And in teaching them, Jesus simply started all, pray like this. And he said, our Father, our Father. You realize the unsaved folks can't say that? Unsaved people are not the children of God. We're all the creations of God. But you're only a child of God when you trust Him as your Savior. To those who believe on His name, to those gave He the power to become the sons of God. So we have that privilege of saying our Father. Now I kind of like that, uh, to be able to say our Father. When, when we use those words... Uh, it has uh, a lot of meaning. Uh, our, our Father, it, it tells us that we belong. When you can say our Father or my Father, you're saying I belong to someone. My friend, you and I, we belong to God. He said in uh, Corinthians, uh, no, you're not that. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. And you see, God uh, sent Jesus, and Jesus paid a price. Peter said, you're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But as a saved person, as believers, as the children of God, we have the privilege of coming to our Father. Now tonight I just want to look about five or six things, very simple things, but right where we live at and uh, the privileges that we have. Now you realize in all of our privileges and all, there uh, comes an attitude we have a lot of privilege. A lot of times we don't enjoy the privileges that we have because of our attitude, because of what we will do and what we won't do. I heard someone say, well, then nobody can make me do anything. I will do what I want to do. Well, just let me say this, my friend. God can sure make you do a lot of things. And not only God can make you change your mind where you want to do them. Don't ever say nobody can make me do nothing. Uh, you that have been in the services know that. Uh, but uh, the privileges that we have. First of all, we have the privilege of walking with Christ. I'm in Luke 24. Luke chapter 24, down about verse 13. You know in this chapter... In chapter 23, we find Jesus crucified. Uh, we find him buried. And the early verses of chapter 24 here, we find when they went to the tomb, went to the grave, he was not there. And uh, the angel said, he's not here, he is risen. You go on down in that chapter, and the uh, disciples were very discouraged. Uh, they couldn't find the body. You know the story there. But we pick up in verse 13. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village 
called Emmanus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all of these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, watch it now, Jesus himself, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. We find these walking with Jesus Christ. Do you know tonight, my brother, my sister in Christ, that the privilege of walking with Jesus is only for those that are believers, that we can walk with the Lord Jesus Christ together. Now, you, you realize in Matthew, excuse me, Hebrews, Paul speaking, tells us there that uh, for believers, the Lord said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So as believers, Christ is with us and he will never leave us. And uh, we have an honor uh, of having Christ to go with us everywhere that we have gone today walking with Christ now you you had the one uh, with you your uh, whoever may have uh, been with you today uh, to walk with you and all but Christian do you realize the Lord was walking with you Amen. you realize he's he's right beside of you I mean he's, he's walking with you everywhere you go Think about that. What an honor. What an honor. You know, uh, it, it, it's, it's a thrill to walk with people, especially when they're people that you look up to. Now, there's some people I don't want to walk with. I mean, people start acting, doing a lot of things. I want to get away from them as far as I can get. But I tell you, our Lord's different. And to walk with Him, to be as close to Him as we can be. But as we walk with Him, you know, we learn a lot by walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can, you can learn a lot when you walk with someone. As you walk with someone, you, uh, first of all, you spend time with them. To walk with them, you're spending time. And uh, you learn how a person walks. And you learn, uh, well, you, you learn a lot about them. Uh, but not only do you learn a lot about them, uh, think about it. These disciples, they had the privilege of walking with Jesus. Amen. Christian, you and I have that privilege today to walk with the Lord. You've been discouraged, <laughs> uh, hard times today. Uh, and they, they come to all of us. But stop and think, I'm not alone. My Lord's with me. He's walking with me. What a privilege to know that he walks. You know, uh, sometimes when you walk, you get kind of tired along the way. My wife and I used to walk before, uh, well, before a lot of things happened, okay? Uh, we were talking the other day, we were looking, and there she is with that boot on, and I got this cane, and I... I asked her, I said, how in the world did we get to this place? Uh, it took us a long while, thank the Lord, to get to here. But I mean, uh, walking with someone, you have someone to lean on. I love that old song, learning to lean, learning to lean on Jesus. Amen. As we walk together, we have someone to lean on. We may get tired and weary. But thank the Lord, my friend, he never does. And he's walking by our side. Not only we have the privilege of walking with Christ, but we have the privilege of talking with him. As Moses and Elias did, uh, back go to Luke chapter 9. As Moses and Elias did there on the Mount of Transfiguration in Luke chapter 9. 
Luke 9, 28. And it came to pass about an eight days after these things, he took Peter and John and James, and he went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. Here, Moses and Elias, we find, had the opportunity, had the privilege to talk with him. You know, that's quite a privilege. <laughs> quite a privilege to be able to talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, they don't have no privilege that we don't have. You and I can talk with Christ today. By the way, He is just as real today as He was in that day. I mean, He may have been closer physically. We may not be real close physically. But my friend, we can talk with him. Now, you don't have to be close to talk to someone. Yesterday, Sunday afternoon, I guess it was, the phone rang, and uh, there pops up a picture of my little girl on the other side of the world and begins to talk. I mean, to talk just like uh, they're in the room with us. And uh, so you don't, you don't have to be... Uh, real close to talk, but you got to be in communication with them. You got to be in contact with them, and we find that these uh, two walked and talked with the Lord. Uh, we have that privilege at all times. You see, talking with Christ is fellowship, having fellowship with Him. Now, our talking with him is called prayer. And in the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, it says, Pray without ceasing. Child of God, we are to talk daily to the Lord. Now, that does not mean that we've got to be on our knees to pray. In fact, uh, there, there's no place that says you've got to be on your knees to pray, my friend. I mean, that's... Uh, we're, we're simply taught that you can pray anywhere, be in, be in prayer instant at all times. And uh, he says, pray without ceasing. Uh, now, uh, a lot of people we can't talk to. We could call uh, Governor DeWine's office tonight and, and tell him, uh, tell him that Pastor Maples wants to talk to him. He'd look at that and say, who's he? <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with him. We can call the White House tonight. And President Biden, uh, Pastor Maple, or one of you want to talk to you. Hmm, I don't remember them. Uh, or other people. But you know what? We have an invitation from the Lord. <laughs> Come! Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Come and reason together the privilege that we have. The book of Hebrews says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. We have the invitation to come into the presence of our Almighty God, in the presence of Christ and talk with him. A lot of people may not want to talk with us, but all he does. The little song says he walks with me, and he talks to me, and he tells me I am his own. All oh, to walk with him, to talk with him. Talking with Christ is fellowship. So we can uh, walk with Christ. What a privilege. We can talk with Christ. What a privilege it is. And then in Luke chapter 10, now we find it's a privilege to listen 
to Christ, to listen to Christ. And here we find this is what Mary did there in Bethany. Verse 38, Luke chapter 10. Now it came to pass as they went and that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. She had a sister, verse 39, called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet. Now watch these. And heard his word. And heard his word. She listened to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, listening is instruction to learn. Listen. Instruction. You know, probably one of the best ways to learn is just to listen. Uh, but you know, to listen is hard. We're, we're living in an age where people don't listen. and You can't. Uh, there's so much noise going on, you can't hardly hear uh, anywhere you look. But learning to listen. Uh, Benjamin Franklin, many years ago, he decided to try to figure out why he lost so many friends. Why uh, he'd have friends and then uh, they would, uh, I guess, befriend him or whatever they say today. I don't know. But he, he'd lose those friends. So he decided to try to find out why. And he said he discovered that one of the major reasons was that he was not willing to listen to others. He was not willing to listen to others. You see, he said, I've got all the answers. He was very arrogant about it. And he did not seem to think that he needed to listen to other people's foolish opinions. Their opinion was foolish. His was right. That sounds like today, doesn't it? But Franklin, he did an amazing thing. He learned to listen. He learned to listen. And he became one of America's most famous diplomats. <laughs> By what? By learning to listen. His whole life and the history of America was changed by his learning to listen. Franklin wrote this, A pair of good ears will drink dry a hundred tongues. He learned that when you talk, you only say what you know. But when you listen, you learn what others know. Learning to listen. Oh, my friend, for you and I to learn the best way is the one to learn to listen to the Word of God. To listen to God speaking. You see, listening is instruction. We learn by listening. And then fourth, I find a privilege that we have is to abide with him. Now, and by the way, as Christians, we're in the book of John, chapter number 15. John chapter 15. I begin reading with verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman, and every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Verse 4, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch can not bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches, and he that abideth in me, 
and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. My friend, abiding in him, a privilege now, abiding in him is productive. To abide in him is productive. Mr. Webster said that to abide is to endure without yielding. He said it's to bear patiently, to accept without objection, to remain stable or fixed in a state, to continue in a place. Strong's Concordance, when we look there, it says that abide means to stay, to stay in a given place, in a Stay in a, a state, stay in a relation uh, or expectancy, if you will. Other words that have been used interchangeably with the word abide are words like continue, uh, dwell, endure, uh, to be present, uh, to stand, to tarry if you will. Now, think about if we abide in Christ, my friend, he, he, He's the vine, we're the branches. And if the vine is not on the branch, it will not bring forth fruit. Uh, how many apple trees have you seen in the last few days or weeks or months? where the limbs have been taken off a few months ago, and how many apples have you seen on those trees? <laughs> you don't. You cut the vine, the branch away from the vine, and you have nothing. You have no life. Will not bring forth fruit. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. And if the child of God does not abide, if he does not continue with Christ, he will not produce any good fruit for God. Child of God, a privilege we have is to abide in him, to stay with him, to continue in, the, in him. That's the privilege that we have. And if we will abide in Him, stay with Him, be with Him, then He will bring forth fruit from our life. We can't do it, but my friend, as long as we're in connection with Him, He will bring forth fruit in our life. You see, God's work is not done by the hands of man, not by the ways that you and I can figure out. But God's work is done through God's people abiding in Him. If we will abide in Him, He will bring forth fruit in your life. What a privilege. What a, a privilege we have to abide in Christ. And then I find another privilege here, and that is living with Him. Living with Him as the disciples did. In the book of John, chapter 1, verse 39, He saith unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw where He dwelt, and abode with Him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. You think about those first disciples of the Lord. Uh, they was with the Lord somewhere around three years you think about it, they was with the Lord day and night. Uh, they continued with Him. And when you live with a person as they lived with Him, you get to know them. And when you get to know somebody, it's either a joy or a misery. It's one or the other. One or the other. We found out my wife and I, and we've lived together and for 58 years, and we've got to know each other 
quite well. You know, you, you get to know a person when you, when you live with them. In many ways, we've almost become one. Uh, we know each other. Uh, really, we can almost answer for each other because we know how the other one's going to answer. I mean, you know, you're, you're with them. You, you get to know them, and uh, you can answer for them. We become like each other. Why? Because we've lived together. We become one. They say that when people live together and are together, after time they begin to look alike. Now, I hope she looks like me and not me like her. Uh, you know, so everything will be good. But maybe that's the other way around. But, uh, uh, you know, that it's true. You do almost begin to look like you. You're that continuation, that with him. And Christians, we have the privilege of living with Jesus. The Bible says that we're to become like Jesus. You know, as we live with Him, each day of our lives, we ought to be a little bit more like Jesus than we was the day before. The privileges, the privilege that we have, what a joy to live with Jesus. And then we have the privilege, this is a hard one, of waiting upon him, waiting on him. In the book of Acts chapter 4 and 31, now privilege of waiting with him. And this is what the early Christians did. Acts 4, 31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, where they waited, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the Word of God with boldness, waiting upon Him. Oh, you know, waiting is one of the hardest things we have to do. I mean, we all want patience, but Lord, give me patience and give it to me now. Right? <laughs> it's hard to wait, to wait, to wait. Last week, uh, Lana went there to the doctor, just had an MRI, but uh, had to wait a week to find out what it was. Waiting. And then he said, go to another doctor. So what are we doing? Waiting. You know, waiting is hard. But we want the answers today. But we find the disciples there with him waiting Waiting, 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 you see, is the place of power. Acts 1 8 says, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. As we wait on Him, as we wait on Him, then is when He provides for us. He provides the things we need to do His will with His power. You see, we can't do His will in our power. We can only do His will with His power. But while they waited, the Holy Ghost, and He gave them power. Child of God, it's when we wait upon the Lord. Too many times we want to do things in ourselves. I mean, we just, we want to do it. I mean, anybody knows I'm right. That's what we all say, isn't it? But to wait on Him. Then we see the Lord begin. The Lord begin to work. The Lord gives us power through Him. Waiting on Him. Another privilege we have as Christians is watching for Him. Watching for him as Christians are to do. In Luke chapter 8 and verse 40. And it came to pass 
that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. For they were all waiting for him. Can you see them waiting for him? Then think about it. As they waited, they were expecting him. In waiting is expectancy. Think about it. I remember a few years ago, quite a few years ago, as I had met that girl, and uh, we began to talk, and she begged me and begged me to marry her. And uh, so finally, the day was set and settled. But you know, as we waited, we waited in expectancy, waiting for what it would be like when we marry. But boy, it seemed so slow. It seemed like a 24-hour clock, 24-hour day was at least a week. I mean, this slow. But you had the dreams and expecting so many things. In waiting, in expecting, we had to work. I still had to go to work every day. Still had to work. I mean, but as we worked and waited, we had to keep our living in order. I mean, in those days... You, you, you still had to pay the bills in expectancy. But all in those times, we was making plans. Our dream, we were dreaming big, for we were expecting much. And then finally, then finally that day came. And then through the years since that day, I've got far, far more than I ever expected I would have. God's been good. But child of God, we're waiting for Him today. We're waiting in expectancy. He can come any hour. It may be before I get out of here, before we get out of here. The Lord may come. We're expecting Him. We're waiting. We're looking for Him. But as we wait, as we wait for him, my friends, mm, expecting my, you know, expecting to hear the trumpet. Mm. Man, can you remember the whole, uh, what's his name? Uh, a couple of them, uh, can you think of his name now from... Uh, it don't matter. Uh, we had two. Uh, Brother Tim used to play the trumpet too. But man, you can hear the trumpet blow. As we wait on him, we're listening. <laughs> listening for the trumpet to blow. As we wait, we work and do the work of the day. But we got our ears kind of tuned in. Or it may be the day that the shout will come. Behold! We're waiting for that shout. We're waiting in expectancy for that day. Well, when he comes, we may be driving by the cemetery, and all of a sudden the graves will all fly open. And up out of the graves will those ones come. Expectancy. Expectancy. When he comes, I'll tell you what, we're going to be changing, folks. <laughs> I mean, listen, there's going to be a difference in us. Thank God Bruce will be changed. I, I mean, he, he's not going to be the same. Kyle's not going to be, You and I aren't going to be the same in that hour. We're expecting that change. The Bible says we may not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Expecting that day to come. Expecting to go be with Jesus forevermore. We're waiting for Him. 
a privilege we have. We're expecting that hour to go be with Jesus. And you know, I think when that day comes, I think, my friend, that day, we will get far more than we've ever dreamed of. I have not seen, ear have not heard. We cannot even imagine what waits for the child of God there in heaven. The songwriter wrote, There is coming a day when no heartaches shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. Oh, happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no more sorrows there and no more burdens to bear. No more sickness and no more pain. No more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face. The one who saved me by His grace. And when He takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. We're waiting in expectancy. It could be today, my friend. We're walking with Him. We're talking with Him. We're waiting for Him. But one day, my friend... He's going to come. He's going to call. We're going to be changed. We're going to be taken up to be with Him in the air. And we won't only be with Him, but we will be with our loved ones that are there also. And then, just think about it. Behold, I shall behold Him Amen. face to face. It's a privilege to be a child of God. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you don't know Christ to save you, you're missing out on all these privileges. Why don't you get saved tonight? You know how. You've heard so many times. But my friend, that's not enough. You must personally receive Him as your Savior. Will you do it tonight? In Christians, let's don't take these privileges lightly. Let's enjoy Him. Let's have part of Him. As we stand, the pianist is playing. Will you?